So we're in the let, let Trey sing was Bob Weir. That's true. Was, that was a good photo. That was a, uh, a surprise, a big surprise. Yeah. Um, I, I will. Um, first, I want to know about that song, though. That's a new, that was a song that's been sort of the big element of, of the summer tour, right? A big, a big element. Widely embraced for us. Well, you know, I, I, it's been a really great year, and I've been doing a lot of writing and a lot of writing with my friends. You know, some of whom I've been writing with most of my life. Right. The guy who uh, I wrote that with, of course, is my friend Tom Marshall. Who, uh, he, uh, I really was thinking a lot while we were on tour. There were many moments when I was singing on tour and I thought just how enmeshed he is in the fish. Um, you know, it's the four of us up there, but he's a huge part of what fish is. And, and we started writing together um, really, in, I think, in fifth grade. So many years before I met the other uh, um, Fish members. There's, there's um, songs was that were instead written. of homework. Instead, well, it was sort <laughs> you of. You did get your homework. It was like our social life right. at the time. Right. Um, it's just the way it was with myself and Tom and a few of our other friends. Um, we would um, the songwriting always became um, that was like was our way of socializing. So we'd go to a party and we'd go in the back room and we'd write songs. Um, and I think that that model kind of still holds true for me now. It's like the songs kind of pull people together and that's what it was then and that's, it's still, so anyway, like I said, that song was written right before the summer tour and Tom and I wrote five or six new songs and uh -huh. my friend Steve, the dude of life, <laughs> we wrote some too and, and I might sing one later. So. Yeah. yeah. How, when you get a song like that, how long does it take to actually, for the band to feel comfortable with it, how long is it? That one to live and breathe. And that no, happened right no away. time at all. <laughs> <laughs> we can charge money for that one. <laughs> the um, but that I think one of the things that I'm, I'm curious about and and uh, is your experience this summer playing with the Grateful Dead. Mm -hmm. um, but I one of the things that. Um, <laughs> That interested me. I, by the way, I, I, I called Bob Weir this afternoon and and said, you know, uh, Mr. Anastasio do, and um, it takes a little while to get his attention, as you know. And but when you get it started, he's he's on it. But um, no, he said you were the glue in the groove. He said you're his MVP. I, I, I had thought, um, from what I know of Fish, one of the things that struck me was the extraordinary application that you guys embraced from the very beginning in rehearsing and, and working hours a day and the, the attempts to find ways to break out of patterns of improvisation. And, to, and it thought me, made me think that it really fitted you for this job of learning, I think you told me you learned a hundred songs, right? Yep. Um, just sitting in a room, I mean, um, yeah. with, with, and, and going through them? And well, I, I started uh, just at home with the guitar, and um, the, 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 first of all, it was a thrill to be asked. Obviously, I'm, I've been a fan my whole life, and I've gotten to play with the various band members, but not together. And um, um, so I got a letter from Phil, which was a very nice letter. And, the only problem was that I couldn't get them to tell me what songs we were going to do. Uh, so, which I love about them. So, <laughs> but I had to learn these things, and um, it was, um, so I just started. I, I got Bob on the phone, and we managed to come up with a list of about sixty or seventy songs, and um, so I started learning those. Um, and I actually, right down the street from here, over at Carol Music. I got a little room and I, invite, I invited some of my friends to come play with me. So, like Joe Russo came in for five days with, with his, and a bunch of his friends. And um, my friend Jeff Tansky, who's a piano player that I met. And we, it actually turned, it became very fun. <laughs> because we would be doing these jam sessions. And I had a little teeny room and, you know, we'd go through, learn one of the songs and play it. And um, sometimes there'd be musicians in other yeah. studios. 
like um, Tony Bennett was rehearsing. <laughs> and uh, he wasn't there, but some of his horn players. Lady Gaga was. Lady Gaga was But actually, Sonny Owen Glover was in there when he was. Anyway, off point. Um, uh, they would kind of come in, and people would like the horn player from Tony Bennett's play. I said, oh, I was a big fan when I was in high school. So it turned into a. But um, yeah, no, I, I learned 100 songs. It's <laughs> It's one of those New York fantasies that, that there are things like that somewhere in a room in New York, it's at one moment, you know, Travis Dezio is learning Grateful Dead songs, jamming with her, you know, meanwhile, and whatever I, else is going I'll tell you one other fun story that I just remember, uh, speaking of musicians who came into that little room, um, um, Bobby and, and Bill came oh. also, and uh, that was cool for um, my friend Jeff and you know got a chance to play with those guys and they were just super cool about the whole thing came down and we're in a little room right to the songs but a lot of the songs we learned we didn't play right so <laughs> was it helpful to your songwriting at all to have to pay such strict attention to someone else's material or, or? definitely yeah um, and I think that'll because this started back in the spring right learning the songs yeah, that's right after the New Year's shows. Um, Which is around the time that you wrote Blaze On, no? Or, yes. Yeah. Um, Tom and I were in a, um, we, what we do when we write is we'll lock ourselves, in, we'll go um, find a little beach house or something. We went to the Outer Banks this time, uh -huh. and um, we've always done this. Um, we lock ourselves in there for three days. We, Tom comes sometimes with some sketched ideas on a piece of paper. The concept of you know a lyricist and a musician is actually mythology. That's not really the way the songs are written. Right. Um, we we write. We lock ourselves in a room and we start riffing and we go and we sit. Are like you this. taping this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a we have a little. It's not, it doesn't take much gear, but right. um, and we we'll start. You're making a record so that you can go back. Yeah. And say, yeah. As a matter of fact, we're, we usually try to make a fake record. What we do is we we, we give it a name. Yeah. And we'll say oh, we're going to write nine songs, you know, and it's so much fun. It's just the best. I, I can't believe I still get to do this with I him. I can't either. I mean, it's just <laughs> I sure wish I could. It's great. I mean, but anyway, the, what you're saying about learning all those dead songs, I mean, there's such great songs, and the lyrics are so, so good. Right. Um, and some of them particularly. And it's one thing, I've always been a fan of them. It's one thing to, to listen to them. It's, an, it's a whole other thing to sing them, inhabit them, and there are a, co a couple of them that I didn't really realize that until I was singing them to the audience right. at the shows. Right. Um, and you were in that really strange position play. where um, you, you actually sort of had to take over at times. I mean, you, ha you had to, and Bob, even Bob said that today, you know, yeah. there were just moments where, you know, it was up to you to lead. And to... Um, I think you're right about that, and there was a... I'll tell you a story about being, being the, the, the lead guitar player, as it were. Right? Well, it was like you know, um, you know, Bill Walton is a famously a big fan. So anyway, uh, he was backstage at all five shows, and he kept giving me this pep speech every night. <laughs> He's a great guy, just a great guy. He was at Soundcheck the first night. Anyway, so, you know, the first night was so much fun. It was like, this you know, in Santa Clara dark, or dark Star in St. Stephen, just amazing, just great. And I came on stage, and he came up, he's very tall. He's, so you're looking up, he says, good job, Trey. He says, he looks at him, he's like, now. He starts giving this coach kind of speech. He's like, um, now you're on a team. <laughs> he says, you know, basically what he started saying was that he said, when you're on a team, that doesn't mean everyone is even. So he was kind of saying, he was saying, you know, like, if Jordan dunks the ball, Scottie Pippen goes to the Hall of Fame, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> If Jordan hands the ball to Scottie Pippen half the time and says, now you dunk it, he doesn't want to dunk it. So what he was trying to say was, you're standing in a spot where the guy who was clearly the leader of this band and, you know, the heart and soul, and I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, it's, it's, it's what it was. Right. And, 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 you know, we all loved, we all loved him and I loved him. And, but same with the guys in the band. Yeah. You know, he did that. Yeah. He went. So, you know, Bill, would say to me, he'd say, go. 
Right. You know, get out there and go. So that because it's not got nothing to do with me at all. It's this this concert had nothing to do with me. In a certain way, it didn't even have that much to do with the band members. I mean, the concert was for the fans to have a chance to get together one more time and uh, and be with their friends and sing the songs. And in order for that to happen, right. the band's got to function in, in the way that it has functioned. And for it's, that to happen, fun. I had to kill it. find that <laughs> line where, you know, you know, I'm not trying to play like the guy who I think is the greatest guitar player, you know, right. ever. It's but, uh, but, <laughs> but you kind of, there's a certain amount that you have to lead right. because that's what he did. Can I just, not to blab on to him, but I'll tell you the, the end of that story. Yeah. That, that, um, that dynamic went on over the five nights and I heard it from a lot of people, not just, you know, even Bill Kreutzmann and stuff. They were like, we like it when you go. Right. They kept saying that. So mm -hmm. last night, um, we were gonna do um, Althea mm -hmm. and um, they said, oh, you're gonna sing it? I was like, okay, I'm gonna sing it. Um, and I said, who's gonna count it off? Like in Fish, I always count the songs off. I'm comfortable doing, playing that role, but it's not my band. Phil counts off for Phil and Friends. Bobby counts off for Rats his band, you know? So they were kind of going back and forth. Bobby wanted it slow, Phil wanted it fast. Bobby <laughs> wanted it slow, Phil wanted it fast, right? And it was cool, they were just talking, and I'm kind of standing over there, and I was kind of saying, well, you know, um, I have to sing this. <laughs> and I'm gonna do it together. I'm gonna look like a, you know, good old. So yeah, just don't let me be the problem. So anyway, <laughs> then I came on stage finally for the second set, and they were kind of looking at each other like, who's going to count it? And, and I just remembered what everybody had been saying to me. So and you just laid into it. I was like, ah, I'm, I looked at me, you know, one, two, three, go! go, go. <laughs> the thing I have to say was that everybody was so happy, I could feel it. Yeah. Like Phil looked over at me, he was like, yes, you know, boom, 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 let go. And they, the rhythm guitar sounded so good, and um, I think that was the point that that, that uh, Bill Walton had been trying to make. That in that band, it's a that's how it worked for 32 right. years. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Do, you, um, do you want to leave that behind and play another song? Um, sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in the lat let Trey sing was Bob Weir. That's true. Here's, that was a good photo. That was a, uh, a surprise, a big surprise. Yeah, um, I, I will. Um, first, I want to know about that song, though. That's a new. That was a song that's been sort of the big element of, of the summer tour, right? A big, a big element. Widely embraced for us. Well, you know, I, I, it's been a really great year, and I've been doing a lot of writing and a lot of writing with my friends you know some of whom i've been writing with most of my life right. the guy who uh, i wrote that with of course is my friend tom marshall who uh, he, uh, i really was thinking a lot while we were on tour there were many moments when i was singing on tour and i thought just how enmeshed he is in the fish um you know, it's the four of us up there, but he's a huge part of what Fish is. And, and we started writing together, um, really, in, I think in fifth grade. So many years before I met the other uh, um, Fish members. There, there's uh, songs that were written. instead of homework? Instead, well, it was sort of. You did get your homework. It was like our social life right. at the time. Right. Um, it's just the way it was with myself and Tom and a few of our other friends. Um, we would, um, uh, songwriting always became, um, that was our, like, was our way of socializing. So we'd go to a party and we'd go in the back room and we'd write songs. Um, and I think that that model kind of still holds true for me now. It's like the songs kind of pull people together and that's what it was then and that's, it's right. still, so anyway, like I said, that song was written right before the summer tour and Tom and I wrote five or six new songs. And uh -huh. my friend Steve, the dude of life. <laughs> We wrote some too, and, and I might sing one later. So. Yeah. yeah. How, when you get a song like that, how long does it take to actually, for the band to feel comfortable with it? How long is it? That one to live and breathe. And that no, happened right. No away. time at all. I wrote just like that. <laughs> 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 we 
we can charge money for that one. <laughs> the, um, but that, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm curious about and, and uh, is your experience this summer playing with the Grateful Dead. Mm -hmm. um, but I, one of the things that, um, that interested me, I, by the way, I, I, I called Bob Weir this afternoon and, and said, you know, uh, Mr. Anastasio do. And um, it takes a little while to get his attention, as you know. And, but when you get it started, he's, he's on it. But um, no, he said you were the glue in the groove. He said you're his MVP. But I was sort of, I, I, I had thought um, from what I know of Fish, one of the things that struck me was the extraordinary application that you guys embraced from the very beginning in rehearsing and, and working hours a day and the, the attempts to find ways to break out of patterns of improvisation. And, to, and it thought me, made me think that it really fitted you for this job of learning, I think you told me you learned a hundred songs, right? Yep. Um, just sitting in a room, I mean, um, yeah. with, with, and, and going through them? And, well, I, I started uh, just at home with the guitar, and um, the, the, the first of all, it was a thrill to be asked. Obviously, I'm, I've been a fan my whole life, and I've gotten to play with various band members, but not together. And um, um, so I got a letter from Phil, which was a very nice letter. And the only problem was that I couldn't get them to tell me what songs we were going to do. Uh, so, which I love about them, so. <laughs> But I had to learn these things, and um, it was, um, so I just started, I, I got Bob on the phone, and we managed to come up with a list of about 60 or 70 songs. And um, so I started learning those, um, and I actually, we've always done this. Um, we lock ourselves in there for three days. We, Tom comes sometimes with some sketched ideas on a piece of paper. The concept of you know a lyricist and a musician is actually mythology. That's not really the way the songs are written. Right. Um, we we write. We lock ourselves in a room and we start riffing and we go and we sit. Are you this. taping this? So that you hear yeah, yeah. We have a we have little. It's not, it doesn't take much gear, right. but right. Um, and we'll basically start. you're making a record so that you can go back. Yeah. And say, yeah. As a matter of fact, we're, we usually try to make a fake record. What we do is we we, we give it a name. Yeah. And we'll say oh, we're going to write nine songs, you know, and it's so much fun. It's just the best. I, I can't believe I still get to do this with I him. Can't I mean, it's. Just, <laughs> I sure wish I could. <laughs> it's great. I mean, but anyway, the, what you're saying about learning all those dead songs? I mean, there's such great songs, and the lyrics are so, so good. Right. Um, and some of them particularly, and it's one thing. I've always been a fan of them. It's one thing to to listen to them. It's an, it's a whole other thing to sing them, inhabit them, and there are right. a, a couple of them that I didn't really realize that until I was seeing them to the audience right. at the shows. Right. Um, and you were in that really strange position where um, you, you actually sort of had to take over at times. I mean, you had, you had to, and Bob, even Bob said that today. You know, yeah. There were just moments where, you know, it was up to you to lead. And to... Um, I think you're right about that, and there was a... I'll tell you a story about being, being the, the, the lead guitar player, as it were. Well, it was like you know, um, you know, Bill Walton is a famously. <laughs> 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 so anyway, uh, he was backstage at all five shows, and he kept giving me this pep speech every night. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice guy. He's a great guy. Just a great guy. He was at Soundcheck the first night. Anyway, so. You know, the first night was so much fun. It was like, this you know, Santa Clara dark, or dark Star in St. Stephen. Just amazing, just great. And I came off stage right down the street from here over at Carol Music. I got a little room and I, invite, I invited some of my friends to come play with me. So like Joe Russo came in for five days with, with it, and a bunch of his friends. And um, my friend Jeff Tansky, who was a piano player that I met. And we, it actually turned, it became very fun because we would be doing these jam sessions. I had a little teeny room, and you know we'd go through, learn one of the songs, and play it. And um, sometimes there'd be musicians in other yeah. studios, Here. like um, Tony Bennett was rehearsing, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he wasn't there, but some of his horn players. Lady Gaga was. Lady Gaga was. <laughs> but actually, Sonny Glover was in there oh. when he was. Anyway, <laughs> off point. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> they would kind of come in, and people would like the horn player from Tony Bennett's play. I said, "Oh, I was a big fan when I was in high school." So it turned into, yeah. but um, yeah, no, I, I learned a hundred songs. It's, <laughs> a, it's one of those New York fantasies that, that there are things like that somewhere in a room in New York. It's like one moment, you know, Travis Dezio is learning Grateful Dead songs, jamming with her. You know, meanwhile. And I, else is I'll tell you one other fun story that I just remember, uh, uh, speaking of musicians who came into that little room, um, um, Bobby and, and Bill came oh. also, and uh, that was cool for um, my friend Jeff and, you know, got a chance to play with those guys. And they were just super cool about the whole thing, came down and we're in the little room right. writing the songs. But a lot of the songs we learned, we didn't play. So. <laughs> was it helpful to your songwriting at all to have to pay such strict attention to someone else's material or? or? Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think that'll... Because this started back in the spring, right? Learning the songs? Yeah. That's right after the New Year shows. That, um, which is around the time that you wrote Blaze On, no? Or, yes. Yeah. Uh, Tom and I were in a... Um, we, what we do when we write is we'll lock ourselves in. We'll go um, find a little beach house or something. We went to the Outer Banks this time. Uh -huh. and, um, and he came up, he's very tall. He's, <laughs> so you look it up. He says, good job, Trey. <laughs> he says, he looks at him, he's like, now. He starts giving this coach kind of speech. He's like, um, now you're on a team. <laughs> he says, you know, basically what he started saying was that, he said, when you're on a team, that doesn't mean everyone is even. So he was kind of saying, he was saying, you know, like, if Jordan dunks the ball, Scottie Pippen goes to the Hall of Fame, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if Jordan hands the ball to Scottie Pippen half the time, and says, now you dunk it, he doesn't want to dunk it. So what he was trying to say was, you're standing in a spot where the guy who was clearly the leader of this band and you know the heart and soul and I mean everybody knows that I mean it's 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 what it was right. and 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 you know we all love we all love them and I love them and but same with the guys in the band yeah. you know he did that yeah. he went so you know Bill would say to me he'd say go right. you know get out there and go so that because it's not got nothing to do with me at all it's this this concert had nothing to do with me in a certain way it didn't even have that much to do with the band members. I mean, the concert was for the fans to have a chance to get together one more time and, uh, and be with their friends and sing the songs. And in order for that to happen, right. the band's got to function in, in the way that it has functioned. And for it's that to happen, I had to Killing. find that <laughs> line where, you know, you know, I'm not trying to play like the guy who I think is the greatest guitar player, you know, Ever. It's but uh, but Ow! <laughs> but you kind of there's a certain amount that you have to right. lead right because that's what he did. Can, can I just uh, 